Time now to cross the studio and find James Creedon, who's here for Truth uh, or Fake, our fact-checking segment. James, you've been looking at a photo doing the rounds on social media claiming to show Ukrainian forces preventing civilians from fleeing the conflict. So Ukrainian forces apparently preventing civilians from fleeing the conflict. That's right. What's the truth behind this? This was in Irpin. It's a photo. Mm. Of course, as with photos... We've been reporting from Irpin. It's been... Horrific there. It has been horrific. 20 kilometres uh, to the northwest of uh, Kiev. And this is a photo sh uh, under a bridge that was uh, destroyed by the Ukrainian army in order to prevent uh, the uh, Russian uh, f uh, troops or, or forces from uh, advancing at, at a faster pace. So you can see here scores of Ukrainians under that bridge. That photo has been broadcast all over the place, Mark. It's been on a lot of social uh, media shares as well in French and in English. And in a lot of these shares... Uh, there is the claim that the armed forces of Ukraine were, Ukraine were preventing uh, the evacuation of civ the civilian population from Irpin, that they were sort of being kept in place. Uh, I suppose there's been a lot of talk in the last few days of humanitarian corridors, uh, disagreements as to how that might be set up. And so here, I suppose, z z zooming in really on one moment, freeze-framed, it could look like the Ukrainian, uh, ar that the Ukrainian army is sort of just putting down barriers and saying, look, uh, Ukrainian people, you might want to leave. There's an awful lot of uh, upset, but no, you can't. And of course, if, if it's just framed in that very simplistic uh, way, it might be uh, easy to misunderstand the context and to think that the Ukrainian army is, regardless of the consequences for the people, preventing them from leaving. It's sort of, it comes across in quite an inhumane manner when presented in that way. May I ask you, James, who yes. is the person who's tweeted this? So this is Axe de la Résistance. It's one of the uh, Twitter accounts uh, that has been sharing it. An awful lot of content on that Twitter account uh, from other conflict zones in the world as well. Okay. Not a huge amount of followers. So it, 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 it sort of varies. The image itself... Um, if you do a reverse image search, can be uh, um, identified as an Associated Press photographer, having originally taken that image, uh, photo by Emilio uh, Moranati. You can see there again, it is exactly the same photo. But if you actually look at other photos that he took from that same moment, you can see that Ukrainian soldiers were actually helping civilians to, to leave. And, and this, this completely matches with the report that we've had featuring what happened in that town completely. So I'm wondering about the motivation of someone from that Twitter account who wants to publish this kind of thing. That's right. Well, it, 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 can, it can be, as is often the case with these situations, willfully misleading people or just really not being in possession of all the facts, Mark. Yeah. And you just mentioned that report indeed. That, that, that I was about to show us that, that report from uh, Cyril Payan in Urpen. You can see here on the cover photo people have evacuating across the bridge. So the fact the bridge was destroyed in order to slow down the Russian troops. There was that moment that we showed you uh, there, but there were also other moments such as uh, the one in Cyril Payan's report and the one uh, in, in another photo by the same photographer. So completely misleading. And I suppose that's the thing with the photo. It's a, it's fr a freeze-framed moment. You don't get the context. You and, I have seen it. you and I have seen enough working in news so for the time that we've worked in this profession yes. to know what oppression looks like in a photograph. And exactly. what we're seeing there... Look nothing like oppression. No. It looked like soldiers basically were, looking for the best for the people behind them to see what was happening out front. That's it right. It didn't look like oppression. Mo so again, I'm going, back, I'm going back to the motivation of the person who publishes that. Right. It's, that's it's part, oftentimes scurrilous. Hard to swallow, I'm, isn't it? Hard to swallow. Oftentimes scurrilous, and we know that uh, so, as an information war too. Shall we move on? You've been looking sure. at a video that's been flagged as fake news claiming the civilian casualties in Ukraine are greatly exaggerated. I'm hearing 474, that's from UN sources. I'm hearing that that is actually a fraction of the number who have been killed uh, so far. But what, you, what have you got? All right, well, uh, this is, you can see just one example of it here, but this video has, over the last month or so, been popped up in various different places. And in this particular situation, it's uh, being presented as an example of civilian casualties being exaggerated. You can see here a body bag and somebody emerging from that body bag, and it's being presented... Uh, as a crisis actor, that, that term that comes back again and again in, in this notion that a lot of news events are theatre, right? Um, and, and so a, a Ukrainian crisis actor, they're emerging uh, from his uh, body bag. Look, without going into uh, all of the, the, the kind of um, uh, the ins and outs of that, it was filmed on the 4th of February. It was filmed in Vienna. It was a demonstration against climate policy. It, it had, has nothing to do with what's going on in Ukraine. And that video was also, also popped up in uh, uh, related to uh, COVID-19, people saying that uh, deaths were being exaggerated. So we've seen this in, in, in previous fake news stories, 
whether it, whether it be demonstrations or whether it be sort of um, uh, trainee videos or whatever, these kind of things can, uh, can filter into uh, fake news uh, content. I like to think, James, that people are well-meaning and a little bit misled, but sometimes I wonder, you know, sometimes right. I wonder right. why people Malicious. post this kind of stuff and what they think they're trying to achieve and uh, who's behind them in some way, shape or form. But Agreed. thank you, sir, for exposing uh, these uh, issues for us. James Creedon with uh, Truth or Fake. Great to see you, sir. Thank Likewise. you very much indeed. Uh, we can bring you, of course, so much more on the situation in Ukraine and all the world news. Stay with us here on France 24.